Hello, welcome. It is episode number, oh, I literally checked before I started recording, 14 of my Disco Elysium playthrough. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you're good. Uh, thank you very much. Ah, oh, I had a packet of crisps just before starting this. Probably a bad mistake. Um, thank you very much for joining me once again. And for those of you who have remained ever present, thank you. This is quite a big deal in a way. 13 episodes of something you've watched. Um, that's good commitment. Also, they've been quite erratic and when they've been coming out so you don't know when to expect them and you've got busy lives so I do appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch. Um, as you may have noticed this one has come out bang on midday on a um, Friday because I'm going to now start putting these out premiering them on a Friday at midday um, because then I thought you always know when they're coming um, and it gives me a chance to record on Friday morning if I need to, if I'm too busy. Sometimes I'll sneak out a little one earlier in the week um, when possible and we'll do two in a week, um, but more often than not it'll be Friday at midday so you can watch it during your lunch break, you can watch it in the afternoon, you can have a massive Friday night in watching it. You watch it over the weekend, you watch it whenever you like, but now you know when it's going to come out. Uh, I hope that's going to be the case. I haven't done it yet because I haven't finished recording and tried to do a premiere. But thank you very much to Pete, um, who I've been having a little chat with. Uh, he is a regular member of the Twitch community and uh, sent me a load of good tips about YouTube stuff. I've really enjoyed just doing this exclusive series on YouTube and learning a little bit about what could be good for future content. So if you've got a game that you would like me to play, um, put it in the comments. If you have watched me play an RPG and thought, I can see why he doesn't do RPGs, this is hell, um, I'd much rather he played this or that, put it in the comments, let me know. Um, I know I've got loads of Disco Elysium left to get through, I'm by no means near the end, but um, I'm going to keep doing this content and uh, I'm enjoying it, so yeah, let me know. Um, also, follow me, twitch.tv forward slash ad underscore ad underscore ad. There's a link in the description below. You can click through to there. Come and watch a stream. Join the Discord. We do loads of community stuff. Um, we have a lovely old time, basically. Also, look, I've got ad 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 mugs now. Uh, this is part of my channel branding. Loads of cool stuff happening. Uh, anyway, should we get into the game? You've been hearing the game. Um... Oh, before we do, actually, I want to say a very quick thank you to Manuel Violetta again on YouTube, because <clears throat> you may remember in the last episode I was talking about not sh knowing what each of the boxes or like the little highlights around stuff does. Um, and now we know the green ones are ones that are always interactable. The yellow ones are ones that I can interact with because I have enough perception. Uh, the white ones are the ones that you can't interact with yet, maybe because you haven't unlocked that part yet maybe you need to equip something and the bluish ones are the ones that you can interact with because you have the chain cutters equipped so that's handy also um barbarian pointed out i couldn't go further into that dark area because i didn't equip my flashlight that's something i don't really ever think about equipping different tools or changing outfits as much as i possibly could um so uh let's bear that in mind today and let's get straight into it shall we I hope everyone's well. This is going to be coming out on Good Friday. Happy Easter to those who celebrate. I like to think most people at least treat themselves to, to an Easter egg or some chocolate or whatever their equivalent treat is. I personally love Easter eggs. I just like a classic Cadbury's Easter egg in the purple foil. Stick it in the fridge. Some people don't like fridge chocolate. That's fine. Uh, I happen to like the crisp nature of the texture of a refrigerated easter egg and i'll forego some of the depth of flavor that you might get by having it as a uh, room temperature right i think last time we were here we were having a little chat with this woman about um her husband sort of suggesting that it was this guy even though it's not and now we've got a new mission but i think i'm going to go straight back in here and use the flashlight right We'll go back into that dark area and use the flashlight. Now we know about it. Uh, here we go. Back in here. I'm surprised that the, uh, the shop owner has let me back in. Let's equip the flashlight straight away. 
Oh yeah. Flashlight and sunglasses, what a combo. Should we take the shades off? Here we go. I'm excited now. I've never actually used the flashlight. Is there going to be stuff I can interact with now? Nothing. Oh, look at the shadows. That's cool. Oh, wow. That is really good. Are we going to be allowed to go through this door now? <gasps> stuff. Large demijohn full of strange liquid. What animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Oh, I've just minimised my OBS recorder, sorry. I'd like to just double check that I'm recording. we got sound, yep. We've got me and the camera, we're all good. Oh, it's this. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Loads to interact with here. Oh. Are we going to be able to go around there? Yep. Money! Naked mannequin torso. Strange yellow colour. Blue velvet soft to the touch. Moth bitten. More money? Drugs? Money. Look at this. $30. Oh, not dollars. Sorry, guys. Uh, I was about to say, what game was I dealing with dollars? But I realized I was watching a Twitch streamer last night and I sent them a tip in dollars. And I was trying to work out the exchange rate. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Okay. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. So it's skis and rotor blades. More money? What's this? <gasps> 50? I do you remember when I was worried about being able to afford a night at the hotel? We've got two things we can sell now. Production schedule. Let's have a look at that. Cube-like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hand. It's intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads production schedule note. This filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Maybe I should be keeping this. I can't see any reason to keep the shot put ball. I was excited when that was worth 13. This is worth 50. Well, maybe we keep that until I get desperate. That's huge. Okay, nothing else in here. Oh. Oh, look, Scroobius Pit playing PUBG. Lovely. Uh, what's this? Is this Emma's Adlier? Oh. What is this? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Welkins? Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even ether welkins. Hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. You're a translucent Welkin. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. I like the look of this Welkin. Oh! Didn't actually realise I could use the torch like that. When Does that work when moving around? It's actually not going to let me move around yet. Uh, examine the Welkin. Yeah. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. Hi, Welkin. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. What? The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. 
Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. I can't imagine that. Your eyes glide over four sections of the imposing green chalkboard. Look at the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Oh dear. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Despite the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Keep reading what happened. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. We've got the filament, we've got the filament. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Right. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. That old woman is going to be outside. What's this? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. A diagram for summoning some time forgotten being. The symbols seem very esoteric. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? No, clearly not. This must be an elaborate piece of art, of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Looks like a surveillance program. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Scribbled across a notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Hmm. That's weird, isn't it? The pers perspective changing, and that doesn't even look like... Okay. 
I went down some stairs. I appear to have gone down some stairs. Alright, so I like the way you can use the torch like this. Look at this. Like The art in this game is astonishing. It's so good. Money. Drugs. Bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This is very cool. I'd like one of these. This ice bear is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. Crack open the door, leave. What is it? Your words echo in the empty chamber, ringing against the wet floor tiles. Okay. The bear keeps staring. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Rivershall Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note, examine one of the wrappers. Let's take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Or examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Okay, let's have a look at the note. Handwritten note from the fridge. Handwritten note you found from the giant ice bear fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit shaped kitchen magnets that were used to secure it to the refrigerator door. Interact. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. Can't believe the off-site copy is still here. Is that going to be that drive? Is that a copy or am I... Anyway, we know they're talking about Kuno at the very least, so I had to hide it somewhere You'll safe. you find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. There we go. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sully Swaff. Okay, so we're not... We're not selling that thing just yet. It sounds like that could be a very important item. But 50... 50 whatever the currency is that I keep forgetting. Uh, who wrote the note? Solicitor. What's the filament memory? We've got it. Doesn't matter. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? It's Kuno. Where's the ice cream maker? We've already found it. Right? Seems like this could be a, a little waste of time clicking on all of these, but we'll go for it. We do want to know who wrote the note. According to the note, someone named... There we go. Someone who owns a radio computer, one might assume. So we need to find Solicitor makes sense it does but who might that be what's filament memory doesn't specify we found it already it's like the production schedule you found only this one's an off-site copy oh so it's not the thing i've already found shit this is going to be a new task to find isn't it it's like the production schedule you found only this one's an off-site copy so are they suggesting it was in the fridge? You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Okay, fine. Okay, so we need to find it. Where is it? Somewhere among the shadows in the cellar. Where's the cellar? The cellar. Have I got it? I'm confused now. We're, this will be fine though. Is this the cellar? Have they referred to this as the cellar? Or is a cellar more likely to be like in a bar or pub? You know, like the hotel basically, if they got a cellar. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? The note does not specify. We know. Are you serious? You sure you don't want to hazard a guest here, detective? Yeah, it's Kuno. Ding, 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 we have a winner. Ding, 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 put the note away. Okay, so let's have a look at 
this again. Production schedule filament memory. Whereas the note says... The note is written with a blue pencil on a... Somewhere I'm reading it again. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. You'll find the filament Sorry, I'm clicking through the again. off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home. ASAP. It's important. With the off-site copy. If I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care. Silly swaf. Oops. Okay. Production schedule filament memory. An ice cream maker. Although, look, I can't get in. What's this? Okay, well, it's good to know what they look like. But did I, did I already just find that in an ice cream maker? I couldn't actually see. Uh-oh. There we go. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a, there is a hidden doorway here. Right, so, shall we use the crowbar? Instead of the plastic bag. Now, now what happens? Does it let me through? Oh. It would, it would tell me if I could interact with it. Oh. We got in anyway. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look in or in or in or wow in or inoperable. Got there. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Do you know what? Th thank fuck, Barbarian Door told me about this. Did I just say Barbarian Door? Barbarian Dude. I'm so sorry, Barbarian Dude. Please keep watching. Um, this seems like a really big, quite important area to be discovering. And if I didn't have comments and other people talking about this, then uh, I probably would never have come back. Because there's so many other things to be doing in the game that maybe I never would have got around to it. Um, a few bricks, bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Uh, but look, I've got a torch. Where am I? Inside, a secret room infested with rats, spiders, and wood lice. Ooh. So there's a hole in the wall. There is. Inside, it's nothing but gloomy blackness. Better not stick your hand inside. Stick your hand inside. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs rummaging around. You find a number of rusty rifles hidden away. Most of them are ugly a and gun. inoperable. But a single rifle catches your eye. It's a bolt action with a fine woodstock. See, I'm still looking for my gun, but I, I, this isn't going to be it, is it? Mine would probably be a, a pistol or something. This is exciting, though. A fit service weapon for a fit officer. Thank you. Too bad it doesn't work. Oh. It looks like it's been out of order for years. Might be able to sell it though? What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around Martinez. This is an interesting coincidence. Could prove useful in some way. You don't know how yet, but it might be useful down the road. I like this. This is intriguing. This is this has got me excited. The weird thing about this is because I'm playing it once a week at the minute, it takes me a little while to get back into it and then I'm like, oh yeah, this is great and then I'm going to end and be like, I want to play more and then the week will pass. Uh, try and do more next week. We'll see how it goes. This is a good find. Really justifies coming down here and looking around. It does. Thanks, Barbarian Door. Should we have a look at it? Yeah, see, I could sell it, but we're going to keep it. I like the look of it. It looks fucking cool. Can I equip it? No. No. You can only equip tools. Just do a few. Oh, 
A few bicep curls with the old torch. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the other ice cream maker. Although that's just looking at it again. Frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Come on, that's a good this sign. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. We need to get in there. Turn the crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? <sighs> Physical instrument. Pry bar not strong enough. So that's minus 20. So immediately I need to get rid of the pry bar. But what else do I... Oops. Uh, leave. What? Uh, tools. Are the chain... Open lock containers. Well, don't think this is going to help. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner. Try to crack open the lid. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. But the pry bar I've got isn't strong enough. Maybe I'm going to find a better pry bar? No. This is going to need something else. Some kind of super pry bar. There you go. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. I won't, because 3%, even for me, is not worth it. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Yes, but I don't have a Except super the one. pry bar by going to the tools tab in your inventory. Thank you. From there, you can equip it to a held slot. Thank you. Thank you so much, but I need to find a better pry bar. Oh, I want to get in! Well, let's keep looking around. You never know. Money. Noz. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Right. I don't think it's a good idea to unplug the ice cream maker because I'm guessing the fact that it's refrigerated or frozen, freezing, is 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 preserving whatever's in there. Maybe we'll do the ice bear. But why would I unplug the ice bear fridge? Let's unplug the ice bear fridge, though. The red one leaves the ice bear fridge. Unplug the giant red cable. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Ah, we can plug them back in. Okay, let's unplug the black one. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Okay, maybe this is going to be when I have the pry bar. because We're going to want to unplug it before I start shoving a big metal bar into it. So let's turn them both back somewhere, on. Somewhere, a machine somewhere in the dark. And we'll worry about that once we find a pry bar. I wonder if I'm going to find that down here. Or if I'm going to have to go and come back. Insane mesh tank top. I'm putting that on right now. Where did you even get that one? No, really, who put that in a drawer? No further comments. Wear it at your own risk. Plus one drama. Yes, please. Also, let's put these gloves on. Oh, no. They are the gloves I'm wearing. Ignore me. Let's let's put these gloves on. Look at this. Let's take these trousers off. Let's put this jacket on. I don't have any other trousers. I know. I was wearing those. Let's put the yellow trousers on. Jacket off, actually. Cool. That's helped. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Okay, we're not going to go up the stairs yet. Because there's other areas we haven't looked in. Such as this. And we'll have a look at this. The cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street. Nothing else to interact with down here. OK, 
Okay. Have we done everything around here? Is there anything else down here? I don't want to go up those stairs yet until I'm sure. Okay, we didn't look over here. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. Okay, sorry. Look at... Surely I could use something like from here as a pry bar. Let's see what this is. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, colouring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Look inside the furnace, smear your hands with coal, kick it with your foot. Not doing that again. I've done that many a time in this game and ended up hurting myself. We'll have a look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What's happening? Maybe it's coming from somewhere upstairs. You should investigate. Is that going to be up those other stairs in a minute? Or maybe you're just hung over again. Yell hello into the furnace. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Smear my hands. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin. Great. Sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. Thank you. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Smear your cheeks. I would like to do that, actually. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What a proud warrior. Yes. This is how the hunted becomes the hunter in this dark, dangerous... Look at this. I'm going to yell hello into the furnace. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? You hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity. Didn't sound like an entity. In that sense, this is the police who's there. I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit. Hello, are you there? Speak to me. I'm going to say that middle one. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. I'm not kicking it. Right, shall we go up the other stairs then? Or are they thinking that I'd go back up? Here we go. Here we go to these other stairs. I need to find a decent crowbar. How do I look? Can I check myself out in here? Wait, show me my face. Oh, they haven't added the, the coal. Oh. I don't think I ever tried going in that door. Okay, back up the other stairs then. I need to get a pry bar. I must not forget that. I really want to get inside that ice cream maker. I was just thinking whether or not I should try and put the this filament memory in the bear fridge <clears throat> to keep it safe but you don't lose items in this game do you it's not like i can get killed and then i lose you know i get um looted oh what's this this appears to be some kind of machine with a cube shaped heart and a wired framework the keyboard has a rectangular on off button a piece of paper still hangs from the printer. Oh my god, imagine if I'd miss this. This is where I'm going to put that thing. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling. The film oh, sorry. you have would fit perfectly inside the compartment. Yes. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Gotta press play. 
A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. This whole area is like the most excited I've been in this game so far, I think. Apart from maybe getting the body down. This is just really cool, like to be investigating all this and finding little clues. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? Oh no, it was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gueslain. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? We should say yes, right? Why did you call me Fortress Accident? What's the production schedule? What are you, a machine or are you alive? That's all for now. Let's ask that. I don't know. Uh, I kind of feel like I wouldn't. Let's ask that. Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. Fortress Accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it? Lonely? <laughs> why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. Why did you call me Fortress Accent? I mean, we're just going to make this a bit suspicious, aren't we? But there aren't any other questions that can kind of go along with it. And I don't just want to say that's all for now. Why did you call me this? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear the flip through a catalogue before she reads out with studious care. My worry here is that Kim's not here. Kim isn't taking any of this in. Am I going to have to relay this all to Kim? I can't remember. <laughs> Hopefully the, this guy in game will relay, relay this all to Kim. Uh, I wonder how that works, if, if your progress can be hindered by the fact that you do stuff without Kim. I'm sure your chances of progressing in some areas, like with that group upstairs, could... Uh, be enhanced by having Kim. But are we going to be hindered without? Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what uh, the catalogue says. Okay, and what's that, this interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? Oh. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. The thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? It is, isn't it? We know it is. Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. You should ask her for a hint. Uh, password, I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Is it my birthday? This is the police. Please open this thing. I don't know the password. Give me a hint. No. Is it my birthday? Still no. I don't know the past. Do I reveal I'm the police yet? I don't know. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Well, I'm police. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Oh. I just want to do all this area now. I just want to find my new... Um... Pry bar. A super one. And I want to find my password. Fortress accident. 
Is there anything else I can do for you today? So maybe we don't... Well, let's try the password Good. and we'll say we're police. Please repeat the password. I'm the police. Open the sink. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder from okay. accident. Okay. Without filing a warrant with Lintel. Okay. I cannot give you access to this filament. All right, Yvonne. Now, can you please repeat the password? No, I can't. I, I can't. Received. Okay, I bye. Don't worry. Yeah. Accident. Bye. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, Von. I like your voice, actually. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Let's print. Let's definitely print. Although I guess maybe we're not going to get anything because we haven't accessed it, but we'll print anyway. Nothing happens. There. Remove it. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. Eve. This is exciting. I don't want to go anywhere else. Mind you, we had that. We 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 we, sh we shouted into a big fire, and now there's a woman to talk to. Where are we now? I can't remember how I got into this room. I think I'm going to go up those stairs, by the way. But I just want to remember how I got in here. Okay, through there. <gasps> Wow, I was going to go outside and go upstairs in the shop. So this is handy. I found these stairs. And more stuff. What's this? <gasps> right, we'll, we'll investigate all this stuff first. Always. Excuse me while I just read this one text message. This is important. Bear with me, caller. It's a voice note. Oh, shit. That's fine. Sorry. Excuse me, everybody. There's just some work that I might need to do. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do it, though. We're going to stay focused on this, though. Money in the paint pot? Ooh, another postcard. I wonder what I'd do with those, or if they're just little fun little things that you can sell. Sneak in here, look at these things before we before we chat. Is this the person I just spoke to? This tray is full of dice, colourful polyhedral dice, hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to, to contain thousands of dice. Uh, polyhedral, are those ones that are used in D&D? They... I don't know anything about D&D, guys. I'm so sorry. Let's chat to this guy. Hello, I'm Nia. Person. Hello, Nia. A bird-like woman sits on the throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Is this who we spoke to? Did we hit... We're about to find out. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. Taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Mm. Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. We'll pretend we're here for a die. She's got to direct you to the backyard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Uh, okay, so what do you mean by Milius? Let's ask that. Yes, a Milius is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats her headphones on the table. Okay. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed. I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. I say that. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? Uh -huh. As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with her ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Sure, I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Maybe, I'm not really sure why I'm here. Honestly, no, I was looking for something else. Squint your eyes mysteriously. Answers. I'm not interested in buying dice right now. I'm a police officer. I need to ask some questions. I'm just going to do that. Of course, I can see that. 
I just thought you were a police officer looking for dice. I do look like a police officer. How else can I help you then? This person means you or no one else. Absolutely no harm. She will answer freely and honestly. Nice. How did you become a dice maker? Don't care. I'd like to order a die. No, I wouldn't. What do you know about the man who was lynched? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Okay. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. Seriously, you've got a great view of the courtyard. You didn't see or hear anything Sunday night? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. Okay. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. Okay. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you never took your eyes off the work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. Okay, thanks. She nods. Anything else, officer? Uh, where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Let's find out. Does it mean she's unlawfully occupying a part of the house? Shameful. Uh, do you know what happened to the other tenants? I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Well, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? Or Pleasance is the one who sent me. She's convinced the place is swarming. Let's ask about the companies. It's just capitalism. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Pleasance is the one who sent me. Play sounds, the bookshop lady? Yeah! I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? The curse is just biding its time before it strikes again. Sooner or later, everyone will fail, even her. Or, I don't know why the bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. That's why I'm here to investigate. Let's push, let's push it a bit. Let's say the curse is biding its time. All oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hold on. The whirling is part of the commercial area. You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the east of the Commerce Central project. Yeah, but it's a separate building. The malicious, malicious energies can't reach there. Or no, the whirling isn't doing well either. Its waitress just took off and customers have trouble paying bills. You're right, the whirling doesn't really look like it's cursed. Uh separate building and then there is me she sighs looking at her messy work table all kinds of tools lie there scattered from knives to carving files to wire cutters i've been here for 14 years selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts not exactly a million real business idea yet somehow i've survived despite the talk of malicious energies strange isn't it it's because she's in cahoots with the demons Pleasance thinks it might be because you're the source of it. Malignant entity? What does that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? Oh, the well, jig is up. Don't know. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I mean... Which way should we go? I'm not sure. 
I think it might be you, or I'm starting to see there's no curse. See, that's what I'd, I'm going to go for it, though. I'm going to narrow my eyes mysteriously. <laughs> so I'm the grand dragon in the cave. I think so. Might I ask what supports this claim? I yelled to summon the ghost, and you're the one who answered. Oh, my. I've revealed myself. <laughs> you better call the exorcist. It's not my job to intervene in matters supernatural, for I am merely a police officer. Of course. How convenient. Well, if you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. She turns back to her work. Jason's needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies, you will make sense of the situation. Uh, can do a white check. Why is there no business failed? No, let's leave. Let's not worry about any of that. Let's have a look at the updated task, though. So I did search for the malignant en entity. I asked the dice maker about the curse and now report back to Pleasance. Okay, we can do that straight away, pretty much. Uh, find working class husband, speak to the assault victim, go upstairs and knock on door number three to talk to the supposed victim. God, there's so many different things. I'd forgotten about that. Okay, but that's back at the, at the hotel anyway. And eventually it's going to get late and we're going to have to go back. Open the apartment door. Okay. We can do that at some point too. We'll try and do all of it. What have I got in here that's highlighted? Just a po the other postcard I got, right? Sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes overhead. The ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist, vaporising from the delta in which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. Okay, see you later, thanks. Enjoy your dice. I've done everything I could in here, haven't I? Right, let's go see Pleasance. Pleasance. Give her a little update. You wouldn't believe what just happened. And I'm going to keep my torch on. I might even shine it in your face. What have you found? I and also, do buy the books. There may be teachings in them. Oh yeah, apparently I might be able to sell back that that um, book about cockatoos. Cockatiels? Cockatiels. But we'll get to that. I talked to the entity. She... she you told me about her name is Nea and she is a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sor I think that's just a wind outside. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. No, Mum, I felt her aura. She's not the one to blame. She may be involved, but I don't have a way to question the malignant entity further. Let's say that one. I don't understand. If you're not sure it's her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? You just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. Just keep stringing her along. You've come this far. You know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. Oh. She says there is no curse. Because there are too many inconsistencies. She said it's just capitalism. Bankruptcy is a quirk of our economic system. Or I could lie and say the source is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought the void spirits down upon this place. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet. There are still leads to be followed, like that strange radio computer thing. I'm into that, to be honest. There is another entity, more malignant, pulling the strings in Martinez, perhaps my travels. Yeah, so this is the part of roleplay that I don't, like, is this purely, like, up to me? Whatever I fancy doing, whatever whimsical journey I fancy going down, I can just pick one of these. Or am I trying to think at what is best to actually try and find out if there is anything? My guess is there isn't anything. Is that just because I'm a skeptic about this kind of stuff in real life? 
uh i might my, my like i'm always inclined to be the good guy and try and help people in this situation but my character would he do that Do I even want to mention the radio computer thing? Even though that's what I'm going to do. This is the truth. I'm going to be more vague. I'm going to say perhaps I'll cross paths with the other uh, a more malignant entity. A third order presence. Yes. There you go. A great dark relief washes over. Her. She's convinced by all of this. So let's let's just let it happen. I've heard of these triactors. In certain occult literature, that's too dark to dwell on for too long. And definitely not in public. I like this actually. We'll go along with it with her. Meanwhile, we know that Neha's just making some dice up there, but we won't necessarily uh, say it's got nothing to do with her, although maybe we already did. Uh, and then we'll just keep an eye out. But really, we need the password for that thing. And we need a crowbar. Where am I going to find a better crowbar? I'm worried that next week when I come to play this, I'm going to forgot forget that I needed to do that because it's not in my task list. Is it? No. I understand everything, sir. That's complete. You're descending into the maelstrom. Yes. I will keep fort up here, strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels... That's cool. May the Lord be with you. She performs an X-shaped cross on her chest. <laughs> okay, well, that's good that I've completed that task. But I just need to keep an eye out for a password and for a uh, crowbar. A bigger, better one. Yes. The venture continues in other waters, darker waters. Okay, farewell. Can I sell the book though? Oops. Uh, interact. Book. Is this something I can do? A cockatoo is a parrot with an erectile crest. No, no. No, no, no. I don't want to read more about cockatoos right this now. This book talks. Put the book away. Hmm. Can I do anything else with her? Esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Okay, no. Bye. What's the update in here now? Okay. All right. In that case, should we go and speak to the assault victim or open an apartment? What else have I got? Not worried about that. Not worried about that. Secret passage we can't get to yet. Don't know about this. Victims' tattoos will just, whoever we talk to, we can potentially do that. We'll ask Gar, although we haven't had the opportunity to do that, I don't think. Track down your badge, haven't been able to do that. Find the armoured gloves, we can't do until the Wednesday, I believe. So our options are finding the class husband, the working class husband is just going to happen at some point. So we can go and speak to the assault victim or we can open the apartment door. It's behind the greenhouse in the yard. Tempted to do that, because I think that's kind of, you know, we're closer to that. Hi guys. Is that easy to get to from here though? I want to go up here too. You see, here's the greenhouse. Uh door is behind the greenhouse in the yard a basement door yeah how do i get in there i have to i've got a feeling i've got to go all the way around right we're gonna do that we're gonna quickly do that how long have i been playing this has been fun i'm at an hour already fuck it last two episodes have been an hour long we can make this one an hour 15 or something It's not that bad to get around here. Is it, can I go up here? Yeah, that's where I need to go. My watch is telling me I need to stand up. I'll do that in a minute. First, another challenge. Let's complete another challenge. This must be it. 
The basement door is weather-worn. Use the key. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Use the key. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. I can't remember why we're doing this. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Gotta go in. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. Exactly. As you hold the open door, you can feel the air moving. A little draft. A whistle. I'm going in, aren't I? But let's see what the uh, what the thing says. Let Everard know you unlock the door. So I've got to go all the way back. Everard asks you to open the basement door behind the greenhouse in the backyard to intimidate the occupant. Do what you have to do. Everard has promised to give you info on the case in return. So I've got to go all the way back over to Everard. Oh, I kind of want to play this for like two or three hours now. Uh... Let's go in. We got to have a look in, haven't we? Maybe we shouldn't take anything. Although we're trying to intimidate, right? A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. Tap on the mugs. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. Okay. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean, uncomfortable? The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Right. Typical asshole. Come on, it's just a bit of fun with a pinch of truth. People have the right to make fun of each other in the free world. Thanks, good to know. I have no opinion on this. I think my character would say that the free world bit. Of course. So very free. Whip out your yellow man mug and compare. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home. Ah. The same humour, the same mocking lines. And we found that mug in the, in the container thing near where the lynching happened, right? An interesting little clue. Mm. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Is this really the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? Who knows? Could be. But this clothes in the trash lead doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere. Still, good thing to keep in mind. Good to keep in mind. Let's move on. What we got here? Whoever lives here admires a fair-haired fantasy hero. Admires fair haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. Who doesn't? You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the flag. Book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks. Lies open. What's in the drawers? White shirt? Never know. One for logic. Stuff to take? Take the magnesium. We're stocked up over here right now. Suitcase, small suitcase full of clothes. Guess are staying over? Don't know. Right, we've learned everything. That actually slightly scared me then, that auto save. Cool. Knocking things off the list. Let's now. Should, uh, what, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speak to Gar. I'm going to see if we can speak to Gar about the clothes again. We'll just, I might just see who's around in the Whirling in Rags. Rather than going to the woman in number three. I don't want to do the questioning of the supposed victim yet. Because we need to be sensitive to that, right? We need to pay attention. We don't want to be rushing it towards the end of an episode. But let's get in here. Maybe I put the torch away. <laughs> feel like a bit of an idiot with my torch out uh, and that. I look great. All right, what's happening? 
Let's speak to this guy. Oh. Okay. Let's speak to Gar. Still hanging with that bird. Can I help you? Well, here's the thing, okay? Why... Ask Gart if he knows how the victim's clothes got in the trash. Why can't I do that now? Is it because this woman's stand sitting here so that maybe it needs to be a private conversation? About my bill. I need a drink. Saw another thing in the whirling. Another thing. Great. I love that. Something else I want to speak yes. about. No. Okay, fuck it. Let's go up to number three. What? Am I getting carried away? I do have a voice note that I need to listen to about some potential work that I might need to do. Oh, okay, can't just walk up. Ah! Sorry. The door is closed. I clicked on, I didn't mean to click on that, continue. There's still a dent in the vinyl where you punched it before. I'm actually gonna leave everybody. I'm going to leave. I'm not going to do this now. I think we save this. Because I like the fact that this episode has all been about that underground entity and getting into that area with the torch, finding out stuff um, that we had no idea was there, getting that lovely cube, finding out about these gaming call center type things, meeting the dice lady. That was fun. We ticked a few bits off. Let's have a look over here. We now have two skill points. Uh, go and spare. We could start building up some other bits. But we won't do that until we know which ones we want to do. How about this area? Maybe we start learning some of these. Or have we got to wait until... Unlock a new slot. That's probably worthwhile. Let's unlock a slot. Yeah. Then we could start doing one of these. Temporary research bonus minus one composure. Minus two half light minus one drama. Advanced race theory. Maybe we do need to do that. That's one of the earlier ones I had. And it's only one hour 40. Okay, let's do this. Should have done that at the start, but I've, uh, I only had one spare skill point at the start. I've got another one today. So that's cool. Happy with that. Kind of happy with my tasks. We're getting shit done. Look. We've done loads. Uh, and I kind of know where I am with a lot of this stuff. This one's annoying, but yeah, maybe we just need to wait until Guard's in a slightly different situation. We've got loads of cool stuff. Should we look at the shirt? Pressed and spotless gleaming white shirt, the kind that serious men wear at seriously interstellary offices. Interloss I don't know that word. Not yet piss soaked or cum stained. Well, still time. And then. Nice. I think we call it. Call my saves. Right. Main menu. There we go, everybody. Thank you so much for watching all the way through to the end of the video once again, if you did, if you managed it. I haven't looked at the stats to see what percentage of people do, but I'm guessing, like I've said before, if you've made it this far, then you're probably in for the long haul and you're watching it all. Because you're big Disco Elysium fans, or you're big me fans. Uh, probably the former. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be back next week, um, hopefully with two episodes, probably with one. But uh, as I said, have a fantastic Easter. Thanks for sticking around. Feel free to come and follow me over on Twitch. The info is in the description. Um, if you go into my Twitch channel, do exclamation mark disco. No, don't do that. Nothing will happen. Exclamation mark discord. Uh, whether I'm live or not, you'll get a little link to join my discord if you fancy it. Uh, please do say hello. I'd love to hear from more people who've been watching the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be back next week. I've already said this. Happy Easter. Uh, what else? That's it. Just go. Just go. Just end the video. Bye.